third Sunday in Lent. We're going to talk about anger. <clears throat> before you, before you get rid of your anger, though, because you know we're getting rid of some things that are bad for us during Lent, you know, and it's to remind us about Jesus Christ. So I thought maybe this little clip would be good to remind us all how Jesus feels about desecrating the house of God. I, I think a lot of that has, has been lost today, but we're back on anger this morning. Are there times when a Christian should get angry? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Uh, he should get angry when it is about the right thing to get angry for. Okay? So, there's right things and there's wrong things to get angry for. You are allowed to get angry if it's for the right thing. <clears throat> so, well, what well, is the right thing? Well, let's, we'll get into it. And you can get angry if it's in the right way. Now, <laughs> Jesus had that whip. I'm telling you, uh, we had a lot of clips to choose from, and I like this one best. Because I like to see that passion that he had for his father's house. Uh, and, and, and the positive action that he put forth to honor his father's house. And to remind people about his father's house. And how important it was that people come to worship uh, let me ask you a question, a little, few illustrations. Have you ever wondered how bad it hurts a baseball player's leg when he strikes out and breaks his bat over his leg? You ever, you ever seen that? Do you ever think it must be a dummy bat or something, you know? Must be a bat that's already broken or something. Who wants to take a chance on breaking their leg? Making all those millions... And wouldn't it be something to take a bat and break it over your leg and that's the end of your career? Because you got angry? You got mad at yourself? <clears throat> or you got mad at the, the call that the umpire made? You know? He said, you're out. You got so mad you took the bat and cracked it over you. And if you'll notice, it's always the small part of the bat. Take that big part of it and try to crack it over your leg. Uh-uh. It's, it's like, I'm angry, <clears throat> but I know how far to go. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how that these golfers, <laughs> uh, how they ever found their golf clubs that they threw away? Have you seen that? Have you seen them <clears throat> miss the putt or something like that? And they take their golf club and just sling it. Everybody has to run, don't they? I, but anyhow, and have you ever seen, uh, <clears throat> who was it, Mac, McEnroe, the tennis player? <laughs> he was so angry, he yelled at the judge just about on every call that was against him in a tennis match, you know. And uh, <laughs> he just, I thought he was going to reach up and get them and jerk them off of their stand just any minute, you know. Just mad, angry, uncontrollable, rage. Well, if you've got that kind of rage, this is a good time of the year to get rid of it. If you're looking for something to get rid of, and if you're one of these angry, angry, angry persons that don't do it the right time, don't do it for the right reasons, oh yeah, you're taking action all right. But it's all wrong then you need to listen up this morning. How about those coaches and players who get angry at the referees 
during the baseball game, the hockey game, or the football game. Boy, them hockey players. Woo! Do, the, do you ever see them get angry? <clears throat> Are they just real passive bunch, you know, putting that little putt around, you know? No. No. They're out for blood. They're going to win. <clears throat> and if it takes knocking you over the wall, then they'll do it. <clears throat> Why do you think they got all that padding on for? <laughs> you know, yeah, they get angry. We see all this. We understand all this. Let's get a little closer to uh, the church. Let's get a little closer to home. Let's, let, let's get a little closer to God's chosen people, okay? And people that have given their life to be like Jesus Christ. Sold out to Jesus Christ. Well, have you ever witnessed a church member in a fit of anger? <clears throat> Boy, you are passive if you haven't. I, I don't know if there is such a church. Is, is there a church that's really on fire for God and, and they don't ruffle anybody's feathers? Huh? If you're really serving God, you're on fire for God and you're witnessing for God and you're doing what God encourages us to do in his word, do you ever make somebody angry? It's the reason I didn't like door-to-door -door witnessing. My, I don't know how many doors have been slammed in my face. You know, and when they slam them in your face, do you get angry? Well, I know I did when I was selling encyclopedias, but anyhow, don't ever stick your foot in the door. <laughs> you may lose it when they slam it. But it happens in church. Sure it does. I, I doubt if there's any church that someone hasn't felt that they were wronged or they got angry. Uh, and I'm looking for the right kind of anger in all this now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I guess every Christian that ever gets angry at another Christian, I guess it's all righteous anger, isn't it? Wouldn't we want to go that route? You know, somebody, and boy, I, whoa, you got to be careful today. You got these little cell phones. Whip that thing out, and they're sitting there getting a picture of you while you're doing all this rage, you know. And guess where it's at next, that evening? Huh? Facebook. <whistles> there you are in a mad rage. Something upset you or somebody upset you, you know. Uh, I don't know. There's just all kinds of reasons why we can just lose our cool in church. But anyhow, think just for a minute real quick while you're... Maybe, uh, Am, am I doing this like Jesus Christ would have done it? Uh, maybe I ought to get a whip. You know, you need to be careful. Make sure it's righteous anger. If it ain't, you're going to be on Facebook tomorrow. And you're going to have a lot of explaining to do. Righteous anger. Well, uh, I've seen some illustrations. I've been pastoring a long time. I've pastored different churches. Uh, uh, I hesitate to share with you the difference in righteous anger and unrighteous anger, you know, because I've seen enough of it. I get a pretty good idea of which is which. Uh, I've, I've seen them. I've seen them get voted out of offices. Just a simple thing, get him voted out of an office, you know. And no reflection on you, just trying to get, you know, more people involved in church, this, that, and the other. And <laughs> by the way, a lot of people have been doing that same job and same job and same job, and they're wore out and they're tired and they're burnt out. You know, they're watching burnout tapes. That's a good illustration or, you know, that or, or indication that you're, tired of doing that job you know and so you don't care 
But there's some people that really take it wrong. Uh, some trustees, if they're if they get elected and as a trustee and they're rebuilding a church, <laughs> that really ain't what the jo job is, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, you might get a little angry after you fall off of the roof two or three times, and but <laughs> and the equipment you got to work on, you know what I mean. And you really don't care to lose that position. Would somebody take this job? And uh, but there's some people that get angry. I've saw them storm out of churches. The sad part about that is a lot of these circumstances, uh, people people never come back to church. They they get out of church. I don't know whether it's because they feel guilty about what they did or realize they've done wrong. And, and, and we teach all the time that Christ forgives us. All we got to do is repent and say, I'll try not to do it again. And repent and I'll try not to do it again and keep going, you know. And that's the way Christ is. Christ is long-suffering, isn't he? But see, when we get angry at other people, sometimes we don't think they're long-suffering. We don't think that they'll forgive us. But what's the Bible say if you don't forgive them? <laughs> yeah, 70 times 70. 70 times 7. That's long. Anyhow, he's telling you, forgive those that genuinely repent. And church, you can get angry and you can do wrong and you can sin in doing it. But if you do, you come back and you repent of your wrong. And don't say, I'm liable to do it again. You know, putting you on guard, I'm going to do it again. People can wrong you, definitely wrong you. What they did to you was wrong. And you sometimes feel real justified in saying something about it or reacting to it. And there's sometimes when somebody does you wrong, you... If your anger stirs you up to the point that you take action, sometimes it's good. We have a situation here. I, I've been in all kinds of churches. There's all kinds of situations where they took up the offering and sometimes just one person took up the whole offering. He's wide open or she's wide open for false accusations. Don't let that happen in your church. And let me, ask, let me ask you this. Uh, there's that kind of hurt. There's spiritual hurts. Have you ever heard about spiritual hurts? Somebody that got hurt spiritually? I'm going to tell you, there's probably not, any, not anything any worse to a Christian than if somebody offends them spiritually. And they're innocent. But somebody falsely accused them about something and hurt their service to God in the church that they were serving in. That's terrible. Studies show that Americans are angrier today than ever. A survey was taken revealing that 84% are angrier today compared with a generation ago. 84%. We are getting to be an angrier nation every generation. I don't know what we'll be doing in the next generation. It may be an out and out war. But we're getting angrier. Something's wrong that we're getting angrier all the time. Families are getting angrier. Work's getting angrier, you know. Some of you know what I'm talking about. 42% reported feeling angrier. Now listen, 42%, that's almost 50%, feeling angrier this last year than the years before. Just in one year, 40% of the nation are angrier. Now we know what all went on. Politics makes people angry, you know. <sighs> changes make people angry. 
Some of that, I'm sure, was along those lines. But my thinking is, I'm having a hard time telling who's telling the truth. And that makes me a little angry. Who's telling the truth? I'm looking for truth. And I show, told you last week, this is the truth. As far as I'm concerned, it's about the only truth. But when you're continuously lied to and lied to and lied to, does that not make you angry? Sure. 69% believe that anger is a negative emotion. Should never get angry. We'll tell that to Jesus with a whip. You should never get angry. The good news is that about, about anger is that 31% said, now listen to this, 31% said that anger could be and have a positive effect. That's what we're going to look for. That's what we're looking for. That's what Jesus was doing. The anger that Jesus was demonstrating was a positive effect. It moves people. This positive, righteous anger moves people to do something. <laughs> Get closer to God. Well, I'm angry. I'm upset about this. Well, guide it in the right direction, okay? Well, I don't see anybody telling the truth anymore. Get into God's word. If you're looking for truth, if you want everything that's said to be right and accurate, get into this. It's the only book out there. Read it. Study it. Obey it. If you get mad enough about all the lies that are going around, get into this. Then it should calm you down. Sometimes it's right to get angry. Boy, <laughs> I, yeah, you online. Now listen, don't everybody say, whoopee, I knew I was right. I knew I was right in being mad. I knew I was right beating up that guy. I knew I was right. Jesus was angry. When he drove the money changers out of the temple, they turned this place, his dad's place of worship, into a den of thieves, Matthew 21, 13. Can you imagine the rage that was going through him? <laughs> First of all, he left heaven. He left heaven where everything was fine, perfect. He comes to earth and he comes on a mission. He's obeying his father. The only way that God's creation can be saved is through Jesus sacrificing himself. So here he is. He's coming to earth. He's going to try to show everybody truth, demonstrate it to everybody, truth, you know. And then the very place where truth ought to be taught and demonstrated, what's he find? It all started out right because the Jew could not use money in God's temple that had the image of Caesar on it. So somebody come up with the idea. They said, okay, we'll have money changers. Uh, stick them out there in the parking lot or somewhere, you know. We're going to change money. So they, it went good for a while, you know, and next thing you know, somebody else had a, another idea. We, we've, got, uh, we've got people that's made long journeys to the temple uh, for worship, you know, and, and we need uh, some pigeons to sacrifice. Uh, we need lambs to sacrifice. We need all this to sacrifice. Uh, we've made this long journey. We couldn't bring them all with us, you know. Wasn't practical. So we come to the uh, house of God. And so we got all that out there on the parking lot. Sounds reasonable, don't it? 
you ever noticed how things sound right and righteous and reasonable and it's okay with God? You let me tell you what, what happens when one entrepreneur gets his foot in the door of a church. He opens it up for the other entrepreneurs. And then guess what happens after a while? You've got a place right here where everybody enters the temple and you're changing money and somebody else, uh, they, they want to say, well, you know, I'll take your coin with Caesar's image on it and I'll give you back only 90% of what it's worth. You believe that could happen? You believe it could corrupt somebody if... You know, well, we've got to actually have some money for exchanging it. You know, this is a business for us. We've got to make a little money. You wouldn't do it if you didn't make a penny off of it, would you? You'd have to be really a righteous person, wouldn't you? Now, there are people like that, but not here. No. And how long before they start bribing the preacher to get a better location? We make more money. Yeah, the old priest. Now look, you know, uh, we're family here, you know, and uh, these people out here, uh, they go to the Methodist church over there. They're trying to horn in on our, you know, our way of life here. You, can you just see all the corruption that would follow if the devil gets his foot in the door? Beware, church. Jesus is watching. Beware. Hmm. It'll soon, it'll soon turn into a den of thieves. I guess politicians, you ever heard the old story? Well, they get voted in. They're all right and they're good and they're honest when they get voted in. And it ain't a year till they're as corrupt as the rest of them. competition and and it really is a lot of times that way hmm. started out right ended up wrong <laughs> it ended up so wrong that did you know if one of those animals ran inside the temple if a goat ran inside the temple it desecrated the temple I don't know what that meant but it was bad you don't, they didn't even want to take a chance on anything like that ever happening. So there it was right at the door. The devil got right at the door. Do you ever think he gets in? Oh, oh you naive, passive people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yes, he gets in. All the time he gets in. But we're in the saving mood. We're going to change him or her. You get a chance at trying to win them to Jesus Christ. But they've got Satan on their mind and they're corrupt uh, and they're going to come in and have it their way, not Christ's way, not his word's way or anything like that. They've got another motive. And, and so I say when, when you get a chance at leading them to the Lord, and winning them to the Lord, and it don't work, and it just keep on. Did you know one rotten apple can just upset the whole barrel? I, I'm talking as a voice of experience. I want everybody to be saved. I want everybody to even, ever comes into this house of worship. I want them to find Jesus Christ and be saved and go to heaven, get their names recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. But I don't want to see the pretense stuff and then tear up the church. You're better off having a committee that will examine it righteously, biblically. And there's churches being destroyed every day because the devil done got his foot in the door. He's not on the outside, he's on the inside. And the next thing you know, we have a business meeting, you know, and and what was sacred and what was holy and what something that we never thought we would ever 
do or change in our church. Next thing you know, somebody said, I think we ought to let these people in. I, I think we ought to accommodate all these people. You're talking to an old boy that, was, that have seen at least 60 years of it and watched it creep in. Started out right. Oh, love, love, love. We're to love everybody. Bring the devil in. We'll get him saved. Boy, are you in trouble. When a church or a place of worship gets turned into a commercialized circus, the only thing you can do is leave. I've, I've seen this happen. Now, let's look at the definition of righteous anger. When Jesus saw all the things that was going on in his father's house, he became angry. Suddenly, he was turning over tables, flipping the coins and all that, taking a whip. You know, if you got in the way, the whip got you. But anyhow, getting the animals out of the way and all that. Now, that's righteous anger. Trying to stand for what is right and what is true. But I'm telling you, you better be ready. You better be filled with the Holy Ghost. You better know where you stand. You better have done your homework. Or you'll be the one that's excommunicated from the church. Because you're a troublemaker. John 2, 14, 16. Then he took a scourge of small cords or a whip and he forced the traitors out of the temple. What were they there for? To worship God? No. To desecrate it. You got to see these things. John 2, 17. And his disciples remember it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. If you love true worship, if you love good singing, prayerful singing, worshipful singing, if you love to see people's lives changed, if you love to see people saved and their lives changed and their families' lives changed, and when you see something that happens that destroys that worship, it should make you angry. If it don't make you angry, You've already been duped. Satan's already, he done got you. And why didn't the people, when Jesus done all this, why didn't the people raise up, get the law in here, stop this man, he's gone crazy, put the jacket on him, let's haul him off to the mental institution, you know. He, he's not right. Hey, it's coming, church. If you're going to stand for what this word of God says and you're going to teach this word of God and you're going to stand against evil, evil's going to come after you. You get ready for it. <sighs> Have you ever seen some things that you knew was wrong, some evil that's in the world and suddenly there was a voice in you that keeps saying, somebody should do something about that. Be wise, be wise in how you get this in the enemy's camp. Huh? Huh? You listen to God, you listen to his word, you listen to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us. Oh, yeah, all the disciples except John were killed. You don't see anybody getting in line for that, do you, in church today? Uh -uh. We, we don't even want to be accused of anything. Oh, I'll be on Facebook tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know that there's sometimes we all get angry and it's not righteous anger. Sometimes we get angry at our family. We get angry at our kids. 
Anger can actually be positive and a constructive force because it's an emotion that is filled with energy. <laughs> it's an emotion that's filled with energy. And even one author said, it's one of the gifts. I, I don't know if I went that far. I, I'm going to study that again. But anyhow. <laughs> oh, my. When we, when we start to take some kind of action and we know that the people are in wrong and we know that it's very dangerous if things are allowed to continue to go on in worship, I don't know how many times I've had to speak to people and tell them, you can't do that. You think that's easy, huh? A passive, not ruffle any feathers, not stir the water pastor, uh, keep everybody happy, tickle their ears, that kind of pastor. I, I, he may make it to heaven, I don't know, but he just threw his rewards out the back door. And I doubt sometimes they're going to make it. But anyhow, do you want that kind of a person? If you do, then you get ready because everybody's going to go in the ditch with them. Did I say that? Did I say that? Seemed like I read that somewhere. Hmm. I'm going to tell you what. If you were paying me $100,000 a week to tickle your ears, keep your money. I won't do it. I'm going to tell you, when God, when God lays a calling on, on you, uh, when he gifts you to do something, when he asks you to do something, and you're convinced that it was him, you best do it, no matter what sacrifice you have to make. Yes, Jesus was angry. Yes, there is righteous anger. Yes, there's an anger that will uh, provoke you to do something. Yes, there's an anger that puts you in action. But do not do the wrong thing. It has to be done the right way. You say, well, my goodness, you think Jesus done it the right way? <laughs> You're talking to the guy that created it all. Sure, he done it the right way. How do I know that? Did anybody come back and have a meeting and complain and want to throw him out of the temple? Did you ever hear that? Is that written anywhere? No. The only thing is that he got crucified. So I guess in the long run, the devil got his way. But in the short run, he came to be crucified to save the world. So who won? Did the devil win with him on the cross? Or did... God win with his son on the cross. Huh? Who won? Who's going to win in the end? Come on Wednesday night and we'll show you. Uh, get angry at things that are wrong. If you can do something, and I've seen this on one of the TV preachers the other day, uh, there's a lot of people says somebody should do something about that. Somebody should do something about that. School board meetings. Go to how many of you attend school board meetings? Got kids in school. Voice your opinion, huh? Well, because we're silent, the devil has a field day. You know, voting. How do you vote? Huh? It's important. Uh, city hall meetings. I like to go to them here. 
see a lot of things going on in city hall meetings. There's some time when I go in there and the room's full and I've got to pray for them. Uh, if you march, march with a Christian flag. I believe the reason behind all the evil that's happening around the world and in our nation, it's a result of false prophets. Church has a responsibility. Pastors have responsibility. Denominations have responsibility. We're going to go to one now, just as soon as the service is over. I think there's false prophets. I think there's false teachers. People become passive, lazy, sleepy. They don't get stirred up about nothing. Just come sit in a paddy pew. And if I can, take a nap. If he wasn't so loud, I believe I could sleep. Get you one that's quiet. and won't disturb you while you're sleeping. Uh, people who claim to be one thing and by their actions, uh, they're not what they claim to be. That's what's wrong with the country. That's what's wrong with the world. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this in closing, really closing. What would Christ do if he came to our place of worship today? Would he say, well done, thy good and faithful servant? Or would he begin making a whip? If he came to our church right now, what would he do? When was the last time you experienced righteous anger? Righteous anger. Tough lesson today. Tough lesson today. Third Sunday in Lent. If you're going to get mad today. Now y'all remember. Was it last Sunday or Sunday before last? I, God really, I was really preaching hard. And I mean, I was being blessed in it. And I was just caught away in it. And soon as it was over, I thought to myself, boy, the devil is going to make you eat those words. You think my last two weeks have been easy? Follow me. I have been thoroughly tried and thoroughly tested. And that's what happens. And sometimes you say, I don't want to be outspoken. I don't want to do anything because I don't want all the negativity that's going to come against me. Well, uh, if you're serving Jesus Christ, you need to ask him to give you the power of his Holy Spirit to stand up. Period. Stand up against evil. Stand up for your sake, your family's sake, your community's sake, your nation's sake. You stand for right if you lose your job. That's tough. But make sure it's right. Make sure it's righteous anger. Make sure you got God on your side. If you just do it because you got mad, because somebody got chose over you, that's not righteous anger. Make sure you're right. Guess who will take care of you? He'll take care of you. Stand with me. Bow your heads. Father, strong words that we've been led to speak on this morning. When we look at the example of your son, Jesus Christ, and we look at the spirit that was upon him and the zeal and the passion that was upon him. And sometimes there's no telling how many people might try to turn that into something negative. But God, all I can say is help us have just a portion of that passage 
passion for serving you, just a portion of it. Help us, oh God, especially in the day and hour that we're living in. Help us, God, to stand firm and steadfast in our everyday walk for you and with you. Thank you for the truth in your word again. Thank you, God, for revealing it to us because it's our lifeline to heaven. It's what you sent Jesus Christ to reveal unto us and to get us to follow. And he gave his life that we might know. Help us to always remember that, especially in these 40 days of Lent leading up to his crucifixion. Help us to be reminded, God, every week. We ask it in Jesus' holy name and for his sake. Amen and amen.